Hey guys, I'm back with another video. This time we're going to be creating um, a round clutch purse. The mold for this was sent to me from an Amazon seller, Makey. I'll put the link in the description for you to order the mold if you wanted to. And so the, it's a mold kit. It comes with one side for the clutch purse, a clear, thinner mold for a shaker portion if you wanted to add like glitter, kind of like a snow globe. And it comes with a frame and a chain. So right now I'm just mixing my resin. This is a one-one ratio. This is amazing clear cast resin from Michael. So I'm just mixing that according to the instructions and moving my mold out of the way so I can start distributing the colors into each cup. So I'm using four colors, three values of blue, bluish green, and then one gold. So you'll see me measuring out my resin. So my colors, um, I'm not only using acrylic paints, I'm also using mica powders. Um, I purchased a variety pack of mica powders from Amazon and um, I've just kind of been mixing it in with my acrylic paints and I like the gloss and like shimmer it gives. So the paints I'm using are uh, from Craftsmart, which is Michael's brand, the turquoise. From Apple Barrel, which is Walmart brand, uh, turquoise also. So although they're the same color, they're different brands and they actually are different colors like they're they're slightly different they're not the same uh, value of turquoise so I have those two turquoise and then I have um, hookers green this came in like a kit it came in a kit of like a variety of acrylic paints and so I'll have a description for the brand of this and um, I'll have a link to purchase the brand of this acrylic paint in the description box and then my last color is my gold. Um, this is going to be from the brand Let's Resin. And I'm just showing you which colors I have there. So that's the darker turquoise. That's from Apple Barrel. And then that's the hooker green, hooker's green. And that's like a, it's like a blue green, honestly. And then that's the other turquoise. That's from Craftsmart. So it's a little bit lighter, as you see, than the uh, first one I put into the cup. And then last but not least, let's resin rustic gold. Okay, and then these are my mica powders that I'm adding into the colors. I sometimes like to not get the color exactly as it looks in the cup. So that's sky blue. I'm putting that into turquoise. The sky blue is a little bit lighter than the turquoise that I'm putting it into. Um, and then the uh, blue green, I'm putting that into my next cup. The hooker's green and as you see that is lighter than the actual like green that I chose the lighter tone just gives um, it gives it some depth it gives it some body like shimmer so I like using a lighter mica powder so that's glossy blue and again that one is a different value of blue and I already have my gold in there so that blue green showing it again just in case you didn't see it that's my favorite color so now I'm gonna go ahead and mix each section cup and I'm just mixing to make sure that the pigments are evenly distributed within the resin I like my colors very opaque others may like them more sheer or translucent and that's okay everyone has their preference but for me I'm a painter so I like the paint to be solid and opaque. Look at the shimmer, you can already see it before I even finish mixing. It's so pretty. That is my favorite mica powder color. I've used it in like a, a lighter blue and it still gives that shimmer and now I'm using it in a dark green and it still gives that gloss. Oh, it's so pretty. And then that's the other turquoise. That has a beautiful shimmer too. I mean, because if I was just using plain acrylic, you know, I mean, I can add glitter for that shimmer, but I don't always want to have to depend on glitter. So mica powders um, are a good way to achieve a different um, texture and a different look for your colors. So pretty. And then gold, my all-time favorite. 
Look at that. It just took like three stirs and it, it showed up perfect. And I don't normally pour a lot of gold into my cups like for sectioning because the gold is really powerful um, and it can kind of overtake your piece. So I have 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. You can use 91%. I'm just spraying the mold um, to make sure that there will be no bubbles when I pour, you know, that under layer. Um, so I'm just kind of rubbing it on the base of it and around the sides. We're gonna start pouring. I'm gonna get all my colors over here to start pouring. I like to take the popsicle sticks out. They're distracting. <laughs> like, I don't want a popsicle stick falling on my mold. So I'm gonna move all my colors over, take all the popsicle sticks out. And I just kind of like pretend to bend the cup so that um, I'm not pouring a ton on the mold at once like I like the lines to, to kind of show a little bit um, so you can kind of see how I poured a more narrow pour so I'm starting with the turquoise one of the turquoise colors um, I believe this is the craft smart turquoise and I I don't pour in any like I feel like I don't pour in any kind of pattern honestly I mean I pour in a color pattern but in terms of like the direction I pour I, I don't have any kind of pattern for that I just have a pattern for the colors it's it's all about your eye and just finding balance in the piece of course you don't want unless this is what you're going for but you don't want like one side of your purse to be all green and then you have these like blue and greens on the bottom like unless that's what you're going for but for me I try to make sure it's evenly distributed I have colors that will allow the audience to move about the piece gives that movement gives that depth I really don't have a fashion in how I pour, as you see. I'm just kind of like throwing the colors on there. And they just happen to react really well. At this point, I realized that I was literally making the earth <laughs> by the colors I chose. The fact that it's a, a round clutch purse, like it just, this is the earth. This is perfect for celebrating the Earth Day. It's so pretty though. So when you pour, most of it stays on the base. It does not fall to the sides. So make sure you're like pouring from the side of the purse to the other side so that it falls down and I mean some people don't want the colors on the side I don't mind them you know they'll pour a clear coat around the sides and then just pour the top which is also fine and now I'm just filling up the mold making sure that every section has resin on it and that it's going to be even because that is the worst if you miss a spot and you basically have to pour again <laughs> to cover that spot so I'm just going through filling in and I personally liked how the colors kind of mixed on their own. As you see on the top, the gold is kind of mixing in with the green and blending a little bit. There are some cells going on, so I really like that. And that was not on purpose. I swear it's not on purpose. I wish I really knew what created those cells. I mean, sometimes it, I know it's the, the colors that you use, you know, in terms of what is more dense. For the most part, I feel like cells are, they're random. So right now, I'm going back over my lines and filling in according to the color um, to make sure the mold is full and using up the rest of my resin too. So I'm just filling in that gap, as you can probably see on the left-hand side. It's caved in a little bit because the, the side is not full yet. So I'm trying to make sure I pour to fill in that gap. And I'm... I know what I'm thinking as I'm, as I'm doing this is like where do I need this color next? Where, where should we put it next? So you have to just look at the piece, see where it needs. Sometimes it's not about a pattern, it's just about where the piece is not balanced or where it may need some additional help. So I'm using my heat gun to spread um, the resin just a little bit. I'm popping any bubbles that are on the surface. And then I just kind of let the resin do whatever it wants. I'm not blowing it too much because I don't want the colors to completely blend and then you no longer can distinguish them. I just want to allow them to do what they need to do. Filling in. And then this is when I realize I have um, a lot of resin left that I don't have anywhere to put. I pull out a coaster mold. That's that's usually what I have. I have molds kind of laying around me when I'm pouring resin so that I can just grab it and fill it if I have extra resin, which I normally do. And if you did want to add that shaker portion to your purse, that little flat mold that you see on the left, go ahead and fill up that mold with clear resin. Um, I did spray some alcohol on it and on my purse and you can see 
the resin kind of react to that too but um for the shaker portion i did not end up adding it to my purse i did pour it um but yeah i'm i'm just not a fan of that look that wasn't the look i was going for um and it's more so because i feel like i work really hard on the actual purse and getting it to look a certain way and i don't want to cover that with like this snow globe glitter look or what have you but it's, it's everyone you know it depends on your preference um, some people like that over their purse and that's okay um, me personally I just I like working hard on the purse itself so that's me pouring on the side the clear shaker portion it's a really thin mold and it's literally just kind of to put right over the purse once the purse is cured so I'm going to use my extra resin to pour into um, one coaster mold. Again, no kind of fashion. I'm just kind of pouring it by color. I never like want to waste resin. It's so expensive. <laughs> so I, anytime I can, I will put it into a different mold. Just make sure that I'm using it. It looks just like the earth. <laughs> so I'm just using up all of my colors so there's nothing left. And as you see, as I'm pouring each color in that circle, it's just pushing the other ones towards the edge. It makes a cool effect. Okay, so all my colors are poured and then my gold is last. So I'm just going in with like an accent line. The gold looks like, like mol molten lava. So cool. And then I decided to add some more gold to the actual purse. I felt like there was a lot of negative space there. So let's try to make it more interesting. And so I'm using a toothpick on the shaker um, mold just to make sure there are no bubbles that are lingering on the sides. Sometimes they'll um, pop up on the sides and it's hard to get it out, but a toothpick can help. And I did the same thing with my coaster bowl to make sure there were no holes on the side. Holes. Bubbles. <laughs> make sure there was no bubbles on the side. And same thing with the purse. I just ran the toothpick along the edge to make sure there were no bubbles um, on the side. And it's okay if maybe you poured a little bit too much. You can see um, towards the bottom of the purse there's some um looks like there's some village that's about to happen that's okay um when it hardens the next day you'll be able just to cut the extra excess resin right off and sand a little bit if you need to i'm just trying to use up the rest of my gold but i didn't want to overpower my piece so i'm just trying to use a very little and then I end up putting the rest of that gold into a little keychain mold on the side that you probably won't see. Yep, and I'm grabbing my heat gun, getting rid of any surface bubbles, and then trying to remove some harsh lines. And remember, this is just one side of the purse. So if you only have one side, you have to wait until the next day. And this has cured, so you can remove this from the mold and pour again for the other side. So I'm just spraying alcohol. Um, it makes a cool reaction with the gold, so I like that. Sprayed it on my coaster and on the clear mold as well. Okay, and that's good for the first day. So this would be the third day. So the second day, I removed this resin purse from the mold and I poured again um, the same kind of design so I had two similar ones similar pieces as you can see on the left and right of my screen this is the third day so both pieces have completely cured um, I am using E6000 um, glue uh, along the inner portion frame um, so there's like a, a moat um, for the frame and that's the portion that you're putting the pieces that you've created into so I'm pouring e6000 and UV resin into the frame try to avoid putting the UV resin or glue along the hinge where the purse opens because it will leak out and I know that from experience <laughs> so I push down my piece right inside of the mold it goes in really easily 
um, and then I'm going to cure for 90 seconds and then I'll do some additional um, sections after that cures but 90 seconds usually it's about two to four minutes um, depending on your UV resin instructions and before even doing all of this if you choose to use um, if you see on the left side of the screen there's like a little piece of PVC plastic if you choose to use those plastic pieces um, you can and basically those are like guards on the sides of your purse so when you open your purse it doesn't open all the way and things fall out um, I choose not to use it it's I mean I feel like no one would actually try to open the purse like I don't know like that I I personally wouldn't but um, so the PVC is optional and the shaker part of the purse is optional as well um, so just wanted to let you know if you want to go ahead and do those steps you can I would probably suggest doing the PVC plastic sheet before you even put the resin pieces into the frame I would put that into the frame first um, and then after you put your purse together you can go ahead and do the shaker portion if you wanted to add that as well so I'm just basically moving my UV light um, around on the purse so I'm curing that UV resin and I'm going to do that all around the purse and then I'm going to flip it, add the E6000 glue again, UV resin glue again, and put my other piece into that. Going around with UV resin, and you don't have to use both glues. Um, some people would use a heat gun like you see on the side of my screen. Um, you can just use UV resin, that's usually what I do or you can add an E6000. I just wanted to make sure that this was super secure since this is a bigger purse than um, what I'm normally working with. So I added the E6000. And once you're finished, you just add the chain. And this is how it turns out. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.